Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the, the Big, Big Dinosaur, Dinosaur Podcast, Podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. So this week, again, we're going to do something different since this is a pre-recording, and we're going to talk about some of the good and bad animatronic dinosaurs that we've seen. And the dinosaur of the day, Gigantosaurus. So Sabrina and I have seen a lot of dinosaurs through our travels. We haven't seen too many animatronic dinosaurs, but they seem to fit into basically two categories. You've got animatronic dinosaurs that are used to tell a story, and we've only seen one example of that. And all the other ones kind of fit into the zoo style, where they're set up in little areas and you walk around and you see them with different plants and other dinosaurs around them. So we've mentioned before that back in 1999 there was a great BBC documentary style animation called Walking with Dinosaurs. It had sort of a David Attenborough style planet earth feel to it where they would show the different dinosaurs walking around and interacting and raising their young and traveling and everything and they would tell little stories about them and it was really good i really enjoyed it it was kind of fun because some of them were animated and some of them were obviously puppets some of them looked like they were more animatronic style so back in 2007 the bbc group launched a quote arena spectacular and they did that so they could show some large animatronic dinosaurs in person rather than just on tv more recently, in 2012, a exhibit opened in New Jersey, specifically in Secaucus, New Jersey, called Field Station Dinosaurs. That's more of that zoo-style experience where you walk around a big field and you go by different dinosaurs and they make little noises and move, which seem to be more and more popular from all the news items we've been covering lately. So Field Station had a lot of dinosaurs and a lot of dinosaur activities for kids to enjoy, and they actually categorize it as a theme park, which is a pretty good description of what it is. It's really everything dinosaur themed, but not necessarily the most accurate <laughs> or the most entertaining. It's just a lot of dinosaur themed stuff. The dinosaurs at Field Station Dinosaur were not nearly as entertaining as the ones that were at Walking with Dinosaurs. It might be partly because field station dinosaurs and other dinosaur animatronics of that type are usually outside, so that could be why their movements aren't very exciting. They tend to be like a head bobbing or a tail wagging or maybe a jaw opening and closing, but most of the animatronic dinosaurs only have one of those things going on, so you would just kind of bob back and forth, and the sound effects that they had were pretty terrible I think they just had little permanent outdoor speakers set up, and there's just a lot of static and not very enticing. <laughs> so walking with dinosaurs, on the other hand, is the exact opposite sort of experience. You don't move around at all, and you don't have any freedom to explore because you're sitting, as it's called, in an arena, thus the arena spectacular. That When we saw it, we saw it in a basketball stadium, and all of the dinosaurs are fully articulated, and they can walk, they can eat, they can nuzzle, they can fight, they chase each other around the arena, and they sneeze, they do all sorts of stuff. And they simulated poop, <laughs> which was a hit with the kids in the crowd. Yeah. It wasn't actual poop coming out. It was really more like it squatted down a little bit and the guy pretended that there was a big pile of poop. But it was pretty funny. Because Walking with Dinosaurs is in an arena... The sounds are really excellent, and they come up with all sorts of roars. The T-Rex was pretty similar to the Jurassic Park-style whale combined with tiger and whatever else was in that crazy thing. Was it an elephant? I think there was an elephant in there or something. I think there might have been some tortoises mating, too. That was one of the Jurassic Park sounds. I can't remember which one now. <laughs> yeah. So the, a lot of the noises, it seems like Jurassic Park really set the stage for these big dinosaur noises, which this is no exception. If you've seen the BBC documentary, 
a lot of the dialogue is pulled pretty much directly from the show, and so are a lot of the plot lines. There is one difference. In the Arena Spectacular, there's a human running around and actually interacting with the dinosaurs, kind of like he had traveled back in time, which wasn't in the original TV show. And it is a little bit cheesy at first, but then you kind of get used to it, and it's kind of nice because obviously the dinosaurs aren't talking or anything. So having him there to explain what's going on and what time period they're in is really helpful. So I can't really understate how impressive the mechanical achievement of walking with dinosaurs are. They have a full-grown Brachiosaurus, they have a full-grown Stegosaurus, and T-Rex, and all sorts of really impressive animatronics. And they're fully animatronic. It's not like the ones at Field Station where they kind of bob around. They actually walk around the whole arena and they chase each other and it looks just like they're alive. It's really, really impressive. I loved it. And so did all the small children around me. (laughs) With kids, it does seem like the field station would have been a pretty good time. There were a lot of kids running around. They were clearly having a great time. There's all that face painting and balloon animals and the little activities where you can dig up bones, but They weren't so much spending a lot of time looking at the dinosaurs because they're pretty boring after a couple seconds. You kind of see it and you're like, oh, that's Pachycephalosaurus, and then you run off, go do something else. The field station for us only took about 30 minutes because we're not little kids that were interested in face painting and all that. We just wanted to go look at the different dinosaurs. We're just big kids that like dinosaurs. (laughs) Yeah. But if you did have kids, you could probably spend a whole afternoon there with all the different sideshows and little activities that pop up. Walking with Dinosaurs, on the other hand, is an 80-minute show with a break in the middle, and it will definitely keep your attention the entire time. A ticket to the field station costs about $20, while the Walking with Dinosaurs Arena Spectacular is about $60. So if you're on a really tight budget... These outdoor zoo-style ones are definitely a better option. A lot of the ones we've been talking about in the news were significantly cheaper than $20. It seems like Field Station might be the most expensive one. Some of them are even included with regular zoo admission if they're integrated into a zoo. And Field Station is similar to a lot of those. We've been seeing a lot that have about 40 or so animatronic dinosaurs. Field Station had 32 while Walking with Dinosaurs only had about half that many, but they were much more impressive. So I you know, still think it's worth more money. So at Field Station, they had an ankylosaur. They had a pachycephalosaurus, like I mentioned earlier. They had a full-size T-Rex. They had some sauropods. They had some velociraptors, and I was actually really happy with their velociraptors because they were only a few feet long and covered in feathers, which was nice <laughs> that they didn't make a Deinonychus. And the coolest thing, actually, was they had a a weird little hut way back in the corner, and it had a juvenile T-Rex that was made entirely out of balloon animals. I think we mentioned it when there was the Dinosaur Balloon Festival in Marina Square in Singapore, although those were a little more impressive. But it was really cool to see up close and personal. But the worst thing <laughs> was their pterosaurs so they it basically looked like a bad halloween decoration where you hang a witch from a tree or something it was just a few wires with a totally rigid pterosaur just sitting there it was really really bad well and the wings were just some loose fabric that was flapping in the wind it looked kind of like a broken kite stuck in a tree it was pretty terrible But to contrast with that, there's a really cool scene in the Walking with Dinosaurs Arena Spectacular where they put up a huge pterosaur similar to a Quetzalcoatlus or something that is flying in front of a moving screen and you see it flying around and what a day in the life of one of those huge pterosaurs might have been like. That was really neat. And in addition to that, they also had an ankylosaur in Walking with Dinosaurs as well as those other ones that I mentioned earlier. We have a post describing these two animatronic dinosaur exhibits on inodino.com if you're interested. It's called The Best and Worst Animatronic Dinosaurs. And if you're interested in seeing some pictures to get an idea of how these dinosaurs look, then please check out the post. 
Our dinosaur of the day is Gigantosaurus carolini, as requested from our Facebook fan, Tori. So this dinosaur is not to be confused with Gigantosaurus, which was a sauropod discovered in England. This one, its name means giant southern lizard, and it was a carnivore. The Carolini name came from Reuben Carolini, who was an amateur fossil hunter who found Gigantosaurus in the Rio Le May formation of Patagonia in 1993. And the specimen was first described in the journal Nature in 1995. At the time, it was thought to be the largest carnivorous dinosaur. The paleontologists Rodolfo Coria and Leonardo Salgado were the ones who named Gigantosaurus. So again, Gigantosaurus was found near Via El Chocon, and that area now has a Gigantosaurus statue beside the road. They're very proud of it. If you want to see the original fossils, they're in the Carmen Funes Museum in Nequin, Argentina. But there's also lots of replicas around the world. The first Gigantosaurus skeleton found was 70% complete, and it included the skull, pelvis, leg bones, and most of the backbone. It weighed about 6.5 tons and was 13 feet tall at the hip and 40 to 41 feet long. A second Gigantosaurus skeleton that was found later was estimated to be about 8% bigger. It was about 43 feet long and weighed 8 tons. And it was famous because, of course, at the time it was discovered, it was thought to be the largest carnivore, which meant that it was bigger than T-Rex, or at least people thought it was bigger than T-Rex. But this might not have actually been the case. It may have been heavier than T-Rex, but more slender, and had a small brain for its size, about the size of a banana. But it did have a good sense of smell. It had a large skull around six feet long, which may be one of the largest known skulls of theropods. And although it might not be the largest theropod, it's the largest carnivore of the Cretaceous era in South America. No complete skeleton of Gigantosaurus has been found yet, and there's no other remains that show its various stages of development, so there's no juvenile or, you know, different ages of Gigantosaurus, so it's hard to tell its growth pattern. But Gigantosaurus had sharp 8-inch teeth with serrated edges, and three-fingered hands and two short arms, as well as a thin pointed tail. It was bipedal and had powerful legs, it could possibly move up to 31 miles per hour, and it can make quick turns while running. It may have hunted titanosaurids such as Argentinosaurus, and there have been other titanosaurs found near Gigantosaurus such as Andosaurus and Lamesaurus. It wouldn't have been able to take on an adult titanosaur alone, so it may have hunted in packs to take down this large prey. When it had its prey, it would have used its teeth to slice through it, which is common for its family, Carcharodontosaurids. The bones of an Argentinosaurus would have been too large to crunch with their teeth, so Gigantosaurus would have had to bite on softer tissue and raked its teeth across the flesh. Then it would wait for an Argentinosaurus or other Titanosaur to lose blood or be infected and die, and Gigantosaurus may have targeted leg muscles to sever a tendon and cripple the Titanosaur. Francois Terrier said in 2005 that Gigantosaurus may have had a bite force three times less than a T-Rex's, but it was better at inflicting wounds. Just like many carnivores, it may have been opportunistic and scavenged when it could instead of hunted. And interestingly, seven skeletons of Mapusaurus, which is a close cousin that looked very similar to Gigantosaurus, was found in the same area as Gigantosaurus, which means that they died near each other and raises the possibility that they lived in a community, although there's nothing for sure. Gigantosaurus has appeared in pop culture. One example is it rescued the protagonists in James Gurney's Dinotopia, rescued them from a T-Rex, actually. And it's also in the fifth Land Before Time movie, as well as the 2008 movie, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I'm sorry if you've seen the fifth Land Before Time movie. (laughs) Everything after the first one is garbage. I wouldn't say garbage, (laughs) but definitely not as good. Yeah, pretty disappointing. Even for a dinosaur enthusiast. (laughs) Littlefoot never disappoints. So as Sabrina mentioned... Gigantosaurus was in the Carcharodontosaurid family, and Carcharodontosaurid means shark-toothed lizard, and obviously they're a group of carnivorous theropods. Ernst Stromer named the Carcharodontosauridae family in 1931. Some Carcharodontosaurids include Giganotosaurus, 
Maphosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Tyrannotitan. All of those are similar in size or even a little bit bigger than T. rex. Carcharodontosaurids may have been the largest predators in the early and middle Cretaceous along with the Spinosaurids. Carcharodontosaurids, they are around in both Gondwana and Laurasia, which were the two supercontinents back in the Cretaceous when Pangaea was splitting up. And in Laurasia, the part that's currently North America had Acrocanthosaurus, and in Asia there was Shao Chilong. In 2006, when Maposaurus was discovered, Rodolfo Coria and Phil Curry named a subfamily of Carcharodontosauridae called Gigantosaurinae for the most advanced species from South America, which were more closely related than the ones from Africa and Europe. Our fun fact of the day is that on Earth right now, there are an estimated 10 to 14 million species of life. But scientists believe that more than 99% of all species that have lived on Earth are extinct. So if you do the math, that adds up to over a billion total species that have lived on Earth. And that wraps up this episode of I Know Dino. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes. Until next time. Thank you for listening to I Know Dino. If you have any questions or comments about dinosaurs, we'd like to hear from you at plesiosaur at iknowdino.com. And for more information on dinosaurs, go to iknowdino.com or follow us on Google, Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter at iknowdino.